Hey YouTube and welcome to another video from me, Rich Co Photo. I've had lots of questions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just answer one question at a time. Not in this video because it would just go on for ages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer the first question. It would be much easier just to answer one question rather than actually try to answer them all. Otherwise the video would just go on for ages and I don't want that to happen. I just want to get to the question, answer it and then make another video about the other questions. If I can put two together I will. Um, but you know if they're sort of a similar topic I'll do that as well but this first question is about relationships and you saw the video I did if you didn't go back and have a look it's down there somewhere in amongst all my videos I'm going to have a quick look at that and you will understand this question a little bit more so I made that video got three or four questions about it um, and I've replied to the people and it's got a bit more in depth now so it's time to make a video just to cover it if we can say that so the question was around being single and actually trying to break into the social world, um, especially when you've been out of it for a long time. It can be really a daunting prospect of actually going somewhere, even if it's a singles evening or a party or something like that. It becomes something that creates massive anxiety within the person. Um, it could lead into the fear of rejection if you don't get the answers you want or you're talking to people and they don't show interest in you. So what I want to do is share a few tips with you around actually getting into that social scene and being able to talk to people. What I think will be best is if I show you on the whiteboard, I told you it would be in more of my videos and it will be in more of them because it's much easier to explain to you guys how it works. So let's go over to the whiteboard and here we go. Okay, now I think one of the hardest things to do is when you arrive at these places is to actually get into a group. So if you're stood around and there's lots of people, put some little bodies on them, shall we? Like I said, I'm not very good at drawing, but I hope this explains the point. There you go, arms and legs, not very good. So there's a group of people um, and then you come into the fold and now you've got to try and establish yourself within that group. Now it's always really hard to do, um, especially when they've been formed, they may have been in there for you know, 10 to 15 minutes of just talking amongst themselves and you come into the room and that, that sort of group dynamics is already set up. Um, so I suggest that you give that bit a miss. When you enter into the room, and this is something that I will do when I go to um, training and meetings and things like that, I'll try and find a group of three. Now there's a reason for that, okay? Now, if this group of three are talking and you don't wanna enter into this big group, this is much easier, because as you can see at this moment in time, it's actually uneven. So when you come into the room, let's change the color, it'd be easier. Um, it is easier for you to fit into that gap. So what happens is you come into this gap, it now becomes comfortable again the same if there's just two people okay and they're having a conversation it's much harder for you to butt in to a group of two so when you're out look for a group of three and then actually join that group to make it a four you'll find that much more comfortable way of getting into a group of people and then the next person who comes in has the dilemma of what to do next. But that's something I practice if I go to meetings, if I go to um, training, if I go to anything to do with work, um, networking, anything like that, I'll always try and find a group. The only way you can get into these bigger groups is if you know two or three people that are actually in it, you may be able to get your way into it. But first of all, if you're first going into this new thing, go into this group, go into the three to make it a four. It'd be much more comfortable for you to do that. Now, the conversation you need to have with people, okay, some, someone asked me the question, which was off the back of this saying, what, how is the best way to start a conversation with people? Now, the easiest way I've found and has been proven is to talk about something that you have in common. Now, you might think, well, yeah, well, I won't know. Something that we all do have in common, okay, and I'm gonna draw this and it's not gonna be very good, there you go, is food. 
Okay, it's something that all human beings have in common. We all need to do that. So why not start a conversation about food? Obviously, you're gonna say hello when you first get into the group. If you're at a conference or at something like that and there's been food around, talk about it. You know, if there's tables laid out and there's food on the tables, when you come into the room and you wanna get talking to someone, ask them if they've seen the buffet and what does it look like and they will come back to you and say, no, oh, this looks good. And you can say, well, what is your favorite food? What do you like on that table? Which is the best thing for you? Something also to help you guys is to ask what, why, where, when. All these questions are what we call open questions. Okay, so the open questions lead you into more conversation rather than saying, um, have you been here before and someone says, no. <laughs> That's the end of that conversation. Um, if you can say to someone, where have you come from? They will say, oh, I come from Liverpool. And you say, oh, what's it like in Liverpool? I've never been there. Tell me a bit about it. So you've asked them a what question. There you go, what question. So try and keep the questions open-ended rather than close yourself off into a no. There's nothing worse than asking someone something and they say no. That's the end of that. Okay, now the last tip that I'm gonna give you about being in a group of people. So you've joined, you've come in and you've joined, you've come into the room and you've joined this group of three. Now the conversation is going along quite nicely. So as time goes on, people have recognized people and have joined your group. Okay, so now you're in the bigger group. Now, it may well be that you want to leave this group at some point. So rather than, you know, when someone's talking, if they're going along and having a conversation, for you to leave that group will have an impact on those guys. So something that I use again, if I want to leave a group, of people knowing one I might be really bored of what they're talking about so I need to get out of it um, or I see somebody else who I want to have a conversation with over here and I want to get into this little group over here and talk to them the thing that I will do okay is I would always take the conversation so in some way I will try and draw the conversation to me okay now now this gives me permission to leave the group in a nicer way rather than to cut someone off midstream and that ends that conversation, you walk away while they're talking or somebody else is talking. So try and get yourself in there. So the thing you can do is tell them, you know, be honest, tell them that you're gonna leave the group and you want to leave with a compliment. So you say to them, um, I just wanna leave us somebody else over there I would like to go and speak to, I've not seen them for a while, I want to go and talk to them. So what I would say on the back of that is, um, so thanks for having me. It's been really good to talk to you all. What you're just a lovely group of people. Thanks for your time. Then walk off. You've closed it under your terms, and what you've done is you've not cut anybody off in their conversation or walked away while they're talking. That's the best way, I believe, to leave a group. So that was the whiteboard, and I hope you see how groups and how to get into groups and how to have conversations about people and. You know, people are more interested in themselves than they are in you, unfortunately. So if you cannot get them talking about themselves, they'll be off. They'll think you're a really nice person because you've been having a conversation about them. And that leads to advantages later on um, to get into groups where you meet them again. Or, you know, they'll always compliment you because they've been talked to you. And you've been talked to them about themselves. People like that. Get them to talk about themselves. So you can see how going into two is really difficult, but going into three would to make that four would be much easier. So just try and put those tactics in place. Um, if you're single and you're out there, that's just a tip of the iceberg in respect to how to be in, in a group and things like that. But that will give you the initial bit that you need. And what you'll find is that you build confidence off of that. You know, recognize your anxieties when you go there. It's, you know, I get anxiety when I go to a place that I've never been to before. Um, I'm going to a conference or something like that. I'm turning up to a hotel that I've never been to before. But we need that bit of anxiety. That's what actually keeps us safe. So try and embrace it at some level and then use those techniques to get into the groups. So I hope it's been useful. If it has, give me the thumbs up. If you want more videos like this, just let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, the sub button is just there. Just give it a click 
and subscribe to my channel. Plenty more to come. You have a great day. Take care. Subscribe.